What's up, YouTube? It's Paradios91, and I am going to get a lot of hate for doing this video. As you all know, this is my first deck profile video, and it features none other than my empty jar. My empty jar deck. My god, I... <laughs> Everyone hates this deck so much, and I can see why. It's, it's a pretty annoying deck to face, but it's a lot of fun to use against your opponent. This is pretty much my answer to Dragon Rulers and Prophecies, and to an extent, Mermails, if anything. The only thing that can cripple this deck is Effect Mailer. And I'd be lying if I said I didn't run into it every once in a while whenever I use this. But at the same time, I don't mind it. Because like I said, it's my answer to all these meta decks that rule my locals. And everybody in my locals hates it. They hate this deck so much. And I love their hate. Okay, enough joking around. Let's get started with the deck profile. Starting things off is the heart and soul of the deck, which is the one and only Morphin Jar. You flip it face up, discard your entire hand, draw five new cards, continue on from there. And given the fact that he's the main source of the deck, this he's the, pretty much the main the main thing to go through, you're only running one. <coughs> Sorry. You're only running one, so chances are you're not gonna draw him in the first turn. If you do, then hallelujah. If you don't, well there's always a plan B. And every deck deserves a plan B. And our plan B is running three needle worms. Now, same thing with this, it wants to flip face up. Your opponent sends the top five cards from their deck to the graveyard. So, with that being said, the only way it can be done, in order for them to be being flipped, you're running three AD changes in order to manipulate their attack modes. So, banish, it from, banish AD changer from the graveyard, you can flip it either, yeah, you can flip either needle worm or morphing jar either face down or face up. Because Sangin is gone and will not be coming back, he was pretty much on the... Yeah, he was the main searcher for the deck, but because we're in a slower format and with staying and gone, we're running two deep divers. Once these guys are destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can add the morphing jar. If you don't have it in your hand, you will not get it in your hand like Sangin did, but but with these guys, once once it happens, and it's gotta be destroyed by a battle. So it doesn't matter how they they're sent to the graveyard, it has to be by a battle. Once once that happens, you add the morphing jar from your deck to the top of your deck, and you will most likely draw it should case happen, but you will most definitely draw it in the next turn. Because you want to stall the opponent a little bit longer, if you don't have the right things in your hand, you're running two swift scarecrows. Yeah, once your opponent declares a, yeah, declares a direct attack, discard it from the, from the hand to the graveyard, negate the attack, battle phase over. I would love to run two of these next of this next guy, but unfortunately I only have one and I can't fit the second one, so one is, seems to be doing okay for me, and that is Battle Fader. Yeah, yeah, just the one seems to be doing okay for me. I rarely use it because I have the Swift Scarecrows, but it's there when I need it. So yeah, no complaints from me. Yeah, that's our monster lineup. We don't really need that many monsters to begin with because the only monster we really need is just the Jar himself. All the others is just a stall off. Now that was our monster lineup. We're running a huge spell lineup. So with that being said, let's start things off with three Book of Taiyus. Yeah, these three seem to be doing really well for the deck. You need to run three. Three is mandatory. Like you got the Morphing Jar face down already. You can just set it on the first turn, activate Book of Taiyu, flip it up, and there you go. Now, once that happens, you can easily chain it with Book of Eclipse. Oh, my bad. Let me fix that up. There we go. Running three Book of Eclipses. Yeah, just change it. Just chain it. Mainly because it's a quick play spell. You can easily do it. But yeah, once it's flipped face down, you don't have to discard it. You can just discard the rest of your hand. Or if you don't have any hand, it doesn't really matter. You just draw five new cards. This deck needs draw power in order for you to get to the Morphing Jar, considering that we're not really that high on searchers. So, which is why we're running three Upside Goblins. The deck doesn't really matter. Yeah, it doesn't really matter if your opponent gains that extra 1,000 life point boost. 
the deck doesn't focus on attacking the opponent's life points directly, if anything. So all you need to do is just mill out the opponent. And you really need that extra draw anyway. Next we're running three Dark World Dealings. Draw one card at the cost of discarding another card from your hand to the graveyard. It can be the card you drew. This could be really good when you draw into the um, the 80 changers, or if you have a shenanigan to go through with any of the other cards in your hand. Mainly just the 80 changers, I prefer to use it with those because I need to get those in the graveyard. We're running two Pot of Dualities. Again, more draw power, but in this case it's not even really that much draw power. It gives you the option of trying to decide which one of three cards you get to add to your hand. Yeah, just reveal the top three cards. If it's a jar, there you go. It's in your hand. Next we're running two hand destructions. Discard two cards, draw two cards, and exchange. Again, same thing with uh, the 80 changers. Sometimes you might not need the stuff that's already in your hand. If you already have the jar already in your hand or it's already on the field, then there you go. You don't really need that much. But hand destruction is good to have. And the reason why I'm running two is because I really need to get one just in case. The sooner I can get to one, the sooner I can pull off any of the shenanigans I have in store. If hand destruction doesn't do it well for me at the time being, I'm running two magical stone of excavations. Discard two cards from your hand, add a spell card from your graveyard back to the hand. Whether it's a book or whether it's something else, it doesn't really matter. It really does help out because some, sometimes you don't really need the hand advantage. The only time you really do need it is if you already have the books in hand, in which case that kind of set it for you. And sometimes when that does not work, we're running two Feather of the Phoenixes. People have suggested I run three. It's an option, and I have a third one side deck for the time being. I have one, but I don't think I'll be needing it right now. Like Sometimes when I draw into the two, it seems to be a dead draw, so I usually just set it. And I can still activate it, considering the fact that it's a normal spell. But uh, two seems to be doing okay. I really don't mind it at two. Yeah, just discard one from one card from your hand to the graveyard, add another card from the graveyard to the top of the deck. It seems to be doing okay. Yeah, sometimes you can just add in. If you don't have, if the jar should case be, if it's sent to the graveyard one way or another, you can just add it back to the top of the deck. Or any of the books in general. Same thing with this, Shallow Grave. If the jar hits the graveyard, there you go. Revive it with Shallow Grave. And given the fact that whenever... Morphing Jar does hit the graveyard one way or another, and the opponent will have something in their graveyard as well. They need to have a monster in order for you to fully activate this card. Otherwise, it can't be done. Next, we're um, running one Foolish Burial. This is a really good card. I really like using it here with this deck. I pretty much use it in every other deck I have. With this Foolish Burial, you can just send a Morphing Jar to the graveyard and revive it with Shallow Grave. Again, same thing if they already have, if the opponent already has a monster in the graveyard, in which case it seems to be like the better option. If you already have the um, the books already in hand, you're, you have the entire hand set up, you're ready to go, but all you're missing is the jar. Well then, use Foolish Burial. Our final search card, which is a uh, Gold Sarcophagus, whether a deep diver doesn't do the job done right, or if you don't have the jar in your hand, or if you're not going to get it anytime soon. And there were there were times when I kept thinking that where the hell is my jar at, and then I would I'd see that it's in the bottom of the deck. And I'm like, wow, that's that's just great. One book of moon, same thing as book of eclipse, except it only does the only flips it back down, whereas when book of eclipse's effect, whereas case is at, just flip all monsters face down in the field, and once the opponent once I end my turn, they all flip them back up. The opponent, yeah, all the opponent monsters, they just get flipped back up. They draw a card for each card, flip face up. And our final spell is One Day of Peace. You and your opponent draw a card, no damage for the rest of the turn. Perfect way to thin up the deck and mill out the opponent. So yeah, that's our big, heavy spell lineup. Let's get that out of the way. And we're only running two, two traps in here, which is Threatening Roar and Thunder of Ruler. Yeah, just activate this before the opponent goes into the battle phase, and you're safe for another turn. Yeah, you don't really need to run that many traps. Like, I want to run more than one Threatening Roar, should case be, and more than one Thunder of Ruler, but it seems to be doing okay for now. At least I think it is. 
I play tested it against everybody and I've used it against a lot of people as well, as much as they hated it. But I like it. I like it. Okay then so yeah. That is my morphing jar deck. I hope you enjoyed it. Although I'm pretty sure you didn't, given the fact that everybody hates the deck. But nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed it. So if you have any other suggestions, like this is the only other suggestion I have is just to add in a second battle fader and a third uh feather of the Phoenix. But I'm okay with it for the time being. But if you have any other suggestions, I would pretty much... Yeah, I would love to hear it. If you have any other suggestions or anything, then just go ahead and uh, put it in the comments below. Go ahead and subscribe. Like it. Do whatever you want. I will be coming at you in the next, the next video with a performance, if you will, for the FTK or the FTM, or as, I, as I like to call it, the first turn mill. Yeah, I know. That joke sucks. But anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. This is Paradios91, and it's lights out.